Ebesit kata et wa ost. Maras kata! Your forces have failed. Leave now and tell the Canari to trouble me no further. Solas. That should give us more time. I suspect you have questions. The Canari were trying to kill you. I wanted to get here first. I know. They sought an agent of Fan Harrell. I am no one's agent but my own. I fear that the truth is much simpler and much worse than the Canari believe. You're Fan Harrell? I was soulless first. Fan Harrell came later. An insult I took as a badge of pride. The Dread Wolf inspired hope in my friends and fear in my enemies. Not unlike Inquisitor, I suppose. You also know the burden of a title that all but replaces your name. Are you a fragment of what Fen Harel once was? Like Mithal? No. This is all I have ever been. And the legends? I sought to set my people free from slavery to would-be gods. I broke the chains of all who wished to join me. The false gods called me Fen Harel, and when they finally went too far, I formed the veil and banished them forever. Thus I freed the elven people, and in so doing, destroyed their world. You banished the false gods? You didn't kill them? You met Mithal, did you not? The first of my people do not die so easily. The Evanuris are banished forever, paying the ultimate price for their misdeeds. You said that the Elven Gods went too far. What did they do that made you move against them? They killed Mithal. <laughs> Crying for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. I thought Mithal was one of the Evanuris. She was the best of them. She cared for her people. She protected them. She was a voice of reason. And in their lust for power, they killed her. The Evan Uris were elven mages? How did they come to be remembered as gods? Slowly. It started with a war. War breeds fear. Fear breeds a desire for simplicity. Good and evil, right and wrong, chains of command. After the war ended, generals became respected elders, then kings, and finally gods, the Avenuris. You love the Fade. Why would you create the Veil to hide it all away? Because every alternative was worse. Meaning? Had I not created the Veil, the Avenuris would have destroyed the entire world. How did creating the Veil destroy the world? You saw the remains of Via Dathara. The library was intrinsically tied to the Fade, and the Veil destroyed it. There were countless other marvels, all dependent on the presence of the Fade, all destroyed. The elven legends of immortality, all true. It was not the arrival of humans that caused them to begin aging. It was me. The Veil took everything from the elves even themselves. That's the past. What about the future? I lay in dark and dreaming sleep while countless wars and ages passed. I woke still weak a year before I joined you. My people fell for what I did to strike the Evanuris down. But still, some hope remains for restoration. I will save the Elven people even if it means this world must die.
Solus, whatever you want, this world dying is not the answer. Not a good answer, no. Sometimes terrible choices are all that remain. It is my fight. You should be more concerned about the Inquisition. Your Inquisition. In stopping the Dragon's Breath, you have prevented an invasion by Canari forces. With luck, they will return their focus to Devinter. That should give you a few years of relative peace. What's wrong with the Inquisition? You created a powerful organization, and now it suffers the inevitable fate of such, betrayal and corruption. It's not that simple. Do you know how I discovered the Canari plot, the plot I disrupted by leading them to your doorstep? The Canari spies in the Inquisition tripped over my spies in the Inquisition. The Elven Guard who led you to the Canari body, who intercepted the servant with the Gatlock barrel, mine. Why bother disrupting the Canari plot if you're going to destroy the world regardless? You have shown me that there is value in this world, Inquisitor. I take no joy in what I must do. Until that day comes, I would see those recovering from the breach free of the Kuhn. Why? Because I am not a monster. If they must die, I would rather they die in comfort. In any event, it is done. I guess we owe you for that one, too. I hope it gives your people some final peace. The Canari said the Inquisition was unknowingly working for agents of Fen Harel. I gave no orders. You led us to Skyhold. Corypheia should have died unlocking my orb. When he survived, my plans were thrown into chaos. When you survived, I saw the Inquisition as the best hope this world had of stopping him. And you needed a home. Hence, Skyhold. You gave your orb to Corypheus? Not directly. My agents allowed the Venatori to locate it. The orb had built up magical energy while I lay unconscious for millennia. I was not powerful enough to open it. The plan was for Corypheus to unlock it, and for the resulting explosion to kill him. Then I would claim the orb. I did not foresee a Devinter Magister having learned the secret of effective immortality. What would have happened if Corypheus had died and you'd recovered the orb? I would have entered the Fade using the mark you now bear. Then I would have torn down the veil. As this world burned in the raw chaos, I would have restored the world of my time. The world of the Elves. If you destroyed the veil, wouldn't the false gods be freed? I had plans. I never thought of you as someone who would do that, Solus. Thank you. You must understand. I awoke in a world where the veil had blocked most people's conscious connection to the Fade. It was like walking through a world of tranquil. We aren't even people to you. Not at first. You showed me that I was wrong. Again. That does not make what must come next any easier. You never cared about us. We were the means to an end. You were people, and you deserved better. Like all the rest I've used in one hopeless battle after another. You control the Alluvians now? Yes. You remember Briala from Halam Shiral? For a time, she controlled part of the Labyrinth. One of my agents was supposed to take it from her. But he did not succeed. I had to override the magic personally. The Canari stumbled upon this section independently. With them gone, the Alluvians are now mine. There's still the matter of the Anchor. It's getting worse. Yes, I'm sorry. We are almost out of time. The monk will eventually kill you. Drawing you here gave me the chance to save you. At least for now. If I live, I'm coming to stop you. I know. Take my hand. I'm sorry. 
well, while time remains. Brink of war with a canary. Yes, because this Solas provoked them in the first place. The Inquisition did not cause this threat. We informed the summit of the danger. The danger posed by Konari spies inside your organization. Without our organization, none of us would be here to complain. <sighs> no one has forgotten what you have done. But Corypheus is two years dead. If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate organization, not a glorified mercenary band. Inquisitor. You all know what this is. A writ from Divine Justinia authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach, find those responsible, and restore order, with or without anyone's approval. The Inquisition saved the people of Ferelden when you couldn't. We are not disbanding. And we are certainly not submitting to an empress who only sits on her throne because we kept her there. There's worse coming than anything you've yet seen. So we'll play nice. We'll bow. Not to you. The Inquisition will act as Divine Victoria's personal honor guard. Answering directly to her, we will transition from a military force into a peacekeeping organization. My own adventuring days may be done. The Inquisition and its mission continue.
My agents have found nothing. With the Illusions, he could be anywhere. Maintaining the Inquisition, even as a peacekeeping force, leaves us vulnerable to agents of the Dread Wolf. But also gives us the strength to respond. <sighs> we will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us. Who we are, how we work, our strengths, and weaknesses. Then we find people he doesn't know. We will stop Solus by any means necessary. is a terrible title. What are you even thinking? The sky churned like a rolling sea on a dark and stormy night, centered on a gaping hole that led to the ass end of nowhere. A hole that spit up many things that day, comets, demons, and a whole lot of trouble. <gasps> it's about the Inquisition. The din of the tavern cut the silence like it owed the carter money. In the middle, in her element, Red Jenny. She looked me up and down, mostly down. Not playing, weirdy, she said, gesturing with and dismissively eating a sandwich. Don't write that. Seriously, piss up a rope. Sarah made the subtext text, which suited me fine. The court enchanter swirled into the like a drop of beautiful poison spreading in a wine glass. She sized me up with a glance. I'm so glad you made it, my dear, she said. I am Madame de Fair, the most terrifying person you shall ever meet.
Diana enfolded Alphonse in an embrace as warm as a serpent's kiss. I always knew I could count on your support. The Count did not feel the bite of her poisoned dart until it was too late. Even if it requires your death. Drops of rain glistened on the griffin medallion grasped tightly in Blackwall's hand. The silver eyed wings of valor. They mean nothing. He flung the medal to the cold and uncaring ground. You don't know what I've done. You don't know me. <sighs> so romantic. Cole moved like a shadow that also moved like a knife. A shadow wearing a hat where dreams came to die. It's a riddle, he whispered. A cold riddle that gnaws at your mind, but you'll feel better when it's gone. That makes as much sense as anything Cole says. your herald above the law ambassador whose law my lady josephine's eyes glittered like angry opals the law destroyed by rebellion by civil war by poor fiscal management we are the law our mark on adamant but the dust hadn't settled and neither had harding i can offer you a drink if i catch your meaning if you caught my meaning you'd have offered a double what is even happening here a great slab of muscle with horns that could hang a tapestry. One eye scanned for threats, while the other hid behind an eye patch like a chantry sister's old sins. Come on, he barked, not looking back as he entered. The dancer with the great rack comes on in five. That is spot on, actually. Commander had the look of a Templar who had seen the worst of humanity, yet still had the time to style his hair. This is unjust a war, he said, his gaze steely like a dull blade. It's the only war. Cullen! That's Cullen! a class of handsome sneer cultivated by a thousand years of Tevinter elitism. The name's Dorian, he glared. D-O-R-I-A-N. Spell it right, you marble-headed lump, or it's toad time. A toad? That's hardly credible. Mage staff crackling like the city after a good man's murder. You're crazy, the Red Templar cried in terror. Moonlight glinted off ears like the knives you never see coming. Better to fade out than burn away. Ugh, Varric. Where am I? I don't... Oh, here it is. The Seeker clutched at my vest, her tears as desperate as they were pitiful. 
Varric, I was wrong about everything, she sobbed. Could you find it in your noble heart to forgive me? That dwarf, he... he... he put me in the book! <laughs> I'm in the book! I am reading the shit out of this! 